Generally speaking, during the first trimester, an OB provider will talk to a woman about genetic testing. And there are actually blood tests that can be done to determine a woman's risk for carrying a baby with trisomy 13, trisomy 18, and trisomy 21, also known as Down syndrome. There are also blood tests that can assess the baby's risk for having neural tube defects like spina bifida. And there are also other blood tests that can check for the baby's chances of having cystic fibrosis, also known as CF, or other genetic disorders. So talk with your doctor if you're interested in any of this testing and they'll be able to help you determine the one that's right for you. There are a lot of different options. There are some that are done in the first trimester in combination with testing done in the second trimester. There's also a blood test known as cell-free DNA or non-invasive prenatal testing, NIPT, that can be done anytime after 10 weeks gestation. Generally speaking, it takes one to two weeks to get the results back, depending on the specific type of test that was done. And once the results are reviewed by a doctor, they can counsel with the parents and determine if further investigation is warranted or wanted by the parents. Any blood test done on the mother to assess the baby's risk of having a genetic problem is a screening test only. In other words, there are chances of it being falsely positive or falsely negative, although the chances are slim, it is possible. So if the doctor feels like absolute information is warranted or if the parents want a diagnostic test done to actually determine if the baby has these disorders or not, there are tests that can be done. One is called an amniocentesis. And this is where the doctor inserts a needle using an ultrasound as a guide into the woman's abdomen and into the uterus. They actually draw out a sample of amniotic fluid and it's sent off to the lab for testing. A baby's DNA is in amniotic fluid and so this is why diagnostic testing can be done on amniotic fluid. There's also the possibility of doing chorionic villus sampling or CVS, and this is where a small portion of the, of the placenta is obtained between 11 to 13 weeks, and the placental tissue is tested to determine if the baby has any genetic problems. With both of these tests, there are risks associated with it, and there is a, a very small chance of miscarriage. And so for this reason, if mothers just want more information and they don't actually need a diagnostic result, then doctors will recommend the blood test because there is no risk to the baby by drawing the mother's blood. If you're wondering about whether or not you should pursue genetic testing, talk with your doctor. And another very important piece of the puzzle is your 20-week routine ultrasound scan. This is where images are obtained of the baby from head to toe, their measurements are done, they look at the placenta, the cervix, and all the baby's organs to see how everything's been developing and growing. And if there are any abnormalities seen on ultrasound, then this may prompt a doctor to recommend a woman or a couple to pursue genetic testing to see if they can determine the root cause of these abnormalities that they're seeing on ultrasound. And so testing is never mandatory, but it's something a doctor may recommend based on their knowledge of what's going on with the woman and her baby. If you have any questions about whether or not you should pursue it, or if you've had testing done and have questions about the results, don't hesitate to talk with your doctor. And based on their knowledge of your circumstances, they can give you tailored information and advice. If you have more questions in the future for me, feel free to ask them on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash intermountainmoms and recommend us to your friends and family too.